Okay, let's um, see if there are any questions for the UK team. Um, I have a question from the leadership perspective. Could someone comment about Boris Johnson? Well, he's a narcissist. And um, I think he tried very hard. I think he also, in some of the interview, he already started showing emotions and he actually also admits in some of the press conference, I think that, you know, like he failed and he couldn't do, which is not really uh, what narcissists would do. But um, I think it, it was also very rough time for him and also being diagnosed with the virus itself. Do you think that his behavior affected the status of the UK's uh, uh, level of infectivity? Um, sorry, if, is it okay if I answer? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure, go for it. Um, yeah, I think if you compare the UK to other countries um, like Germany and in Scandinavia minus Sweden, um, I think what he and his team decided to do backfired. And this is why the UK has one of the highest death tolls. They decided to go a different route than other countries were doing after Italy and Spain were getting hit extremely hard. Um, and so I think it, at the time it was pretty tough to kind of choose the right policy, but I think now we can look back on it and see that his choice of policy was wrong. Um, but to outright criticize him and say it was, it was bad leadership, mm -hmm. obviously like hindsight is twenty twenty, so I don't think that's completely fair, but he did make a mistake. Other comments? Just, just a, an observation uh, uh, of my own. Uh, <clears throat> my understanding of public health communication is that um, uh, high quality leadership makes a difference, makes a big difference. Um, that uh, being uh, honest and forthright, uh, delivering um, accurate information, delivering bad news when it needs to be delivered, um, neither, uh, neither magnifying the bad news nor minimizing the bad news, but just stating it. And as Professor Green and I have talked about, Andrew Cuomo, the governor of uh, New York, may come out as uh, one of the great uh, role models. Um, uh, Brazil has a problem because um, its president has been, uh, like Trump, um, filled with bluster and minimizing things. So uh, the reason I'm bringing it up is I think that uh, in situations like this, when there is a crisis, uh, the leader does play an important role. And, um, and how you function as the leader can make a big difference. And personally, I, from what I've read in the UK, that Boris Johnson acted more appropriately from the beginning, uh, there would be uh, uh, less trouble in the UK. No question about the US as well. Um, had we had what I would consider uh, proper leadership, I think we would have had a much uh, less disease. That's all, less disease. Okay, anything else from anybody? Yeah, I wanted to add, uh, when all this, um let's call it mass chaos uh, with COVID-19 started happening. I was uh, in the UK and, um, and I remember the, the interview with him on TV and he said, uh, that's the virus. Uh, people will get the virus and whoever has to die will die. And then when he uh, eventually got the, vi got the virus, yeah. Um, he was hospitalized about two or three days. And um, also he was seen like he was living outside, waving to other people. So that was very irresponsible. He was like, okay, he was social distancing, but still uh, trying to be part of politics uh, visible. And uh, after those three days, uh, 
something happened that he was healthy. <laughs> so that was very unrealistic and realistic that he, he had this virus. I think he just wanted, um, it's not for me to judge, but to my uh, perspective, it was like, oh yeah, look, I've got the virus. It didn't kill me. You see, I mean, so he gave like um, a path for, um, for UK, uh, to follow so you know many people were irresponsible and when they finally closed pubs what Britain com cried the most was that they couldn't go to pubs they didn't cry about the burden of disease they cried about the pubs so the irresponsible um, attitude I think was followed uh, because he he shouted to be irresponsible you know what I mean like he his um, leadership style was very irresponsible. So um, also British people started acting like that because they didn't think it was really, it was serious. That's what I think. <laughs> Another leadership yeah. thing also, um, like the British government gave one of the universities like 24 million pounds to develop a vaccine. And the top scientist that was like leading this project actually just had to resign yesterday because um, he was found numerous times in violation of the restrictions having people come over to his house and stuff like that so lead by example but, but whatever yeah i think that's very important i mean as the leader you do lead by example and like this famous picture that manfred and i have talked about of mike pence not wearing a mask uh at the he's at the mayo clinic seeing a patient recovering from covid and uh everyone around him has a mask except him there are 12 people in the picture and 11 of them have a mask. These are very powerful messages. And um, uh, and as a leader, you have a responsibility. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, let's, uh, let's go on, if we might. Um, and we're gonna now have a 10 minute debate about social distancing. Um, is it valuable and should it be continued? And Manuela is going to contend that it should be continued and ACL is going to contend it shouldn't be continued. Are you both uh, ready? Yes. Hello. Okay, go ahead. Aziel, are you there? Uh, yeah, oh, nice. Great. Um, okay, so let's start. And let's start from what social distancing is. Um, so according to CDC, social distancing or so-called physical distancing means keeping distance keeping space between yourself and other people outside of your home and you can uh, practice social distancing by staying at least six feet from other people uh, staying at home as much as possible and uh, do not gather in groups avoid um, crowded places and mass gatherings um, so why uh, should we practice social distancing? So first, let's remind everyone how, how the COVID-19 is spread, because that is uh, the reason of social distancing, mainly. So COVID-19 spreads um, among people who are in close contact. Uh, spread happens when an infected person coughs, um, sneezes or talks, and droplets from their mouth or nose are um, launched into the air and land on the mouth or nose of other people and they can be also inhaled into the lungs. Um, as recent studies indicate that uh, people who are infected but do not have symptoms and um, those people who don't know that they carry the virus, they play a huge role um, in the spread of COVID-19. Um, so those people uh, that they don't know, they have the disease, they go outside, they have contact with other people. And those people who carry the disease, the virus, um, they might have a strong immune system, but they can give it to someone uh, who has a weakened immune system and they eventually might die, right? So the first very important reason why we should keep um, social distancing is that Something happened to the Wi-Fi. Manuel, uh, 
I think Emanuela lost connection. Oh, there she is. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Okay, good. You're back. Okay. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. So, uh, what was? Uh, uh, what was the last thing? You were at the the reason to to actually do um, social distancing. Okay. So uh, the first reason for continuing social distancing. Um, is that for now, for today, it's the only way uh, to, break the, to break the chain of contagion. Um, okay, um, so um, that's why we have all these uh, stay-at-home orders, the restaurants are closed, um, the events are cancelled, you know, we work from home, we have all online learning, because uh, we can only stop, like slower, not really stop, but slower spread of the disease by all participating in social distancing. That's why we, we minimize the contact with other people. And the second very important reason for social distancing is a flattering the curve. And it refers to reducing the number of people who get sick at one time. Uh, so if there are high surges in number of COVID-19 cases uh, all at one time, uh, healthcare systems and resources could potentially become overwhelmed. So social, social distancing um, helps keep the number of people who get sick at one time as low as possible. So, um, you know, uh, we can help health workers do their job. Um, we uh, keep, they can keep up with the number of uh, cases and also we can, they can provide healthcare and hospitalization and treatment uh, not only to those pa patients of COVID-19 but also uh, for other people that need treatment for other problems, health problems. So that is, I think, very important. Okay, Azir, you can, you can go with your part. Okay, Aziel, are you gonna give us the opposite opinion? I'll give the opposite opinion. Um, I know from what some countries like Sweden, I believe, and in the, the UK, at first they're trying to practice what is known as herd immunity, which we all know. Um, they've, uh, well, Sweden mainly is the one that um, tried to approach the uh, herd immunity uh, method because uh, they realized that there are um, there are other risks whenever you fully imply social distancing, especially like the full lockdowns, uh, of course you could, uh, you know, you could uh, affect the psychological health of uh, people. And um, that includes people's mental health. Uh, people could start using uh, substances more, uh, more in um, not tangible ways. In other, in other words, they would abuse uh, substances, and, uh, both legal and illegal substances. And uh, overall, it could trigger new addictions or old addictions that they um, had in the past. It could affect society as a whole. It could have, uh, it could um, influence people to live in fear and panic. And um, also family and friend relationships could start to break out. Uh, social skills, those who don't have social skills could, um, could uh, have problems, of course. Like we're hearing of cases where couples are getting into arguments at home or uh, you know, going through plans of divorce, uh, fights, et cetera, within the family. And, um, or it could be the opposite. It could cause people to, so, um, you know, like practicing other, other things that, uh, that they don't uh, often practice whenever everybody's out normal out in the streets. And um, it could affect eating and sleeping disorders of those that are uh, practicing the heavier social distancing uh, techniques. And also, of course, the economy. It could put more, more uh, pressure on the people that are working that are considered as essential workers. Uh, loss of jobs, funds uh, of the country. Um, in other words, the country will experience less, less jobs, less funds. And um, in other words, yield to more poverty. And as you have increases in poverty, you can have organized crime rates or just regular crime 
risk increase. You could have uh, people, um, in other words, because of the poverty and because of uh, the, the issues in society, they could start seeking for altern alternative uh, substances to depend on for their anxiety, for their stress, for uh, their uh, panics and things like that. And um, go back to my notes. And um, overall, I think it's more efficient to know who has the virus over than just having everybody be uh, socially distanced from themselves because social distancing, it just slows the spread. And um, it's good for cases. It's good for cases where um, the virus is new to the country or wherever they have um, higher risks or if that country itself doesn't have the sufficient amount of uh, help or uh, materialistic um, tools to treat the, the uh, disease that is being spread. And, um, and of course, uh, one of, I think one of the reasons uh, why people are now finding themselves in, into more uh, mental problems is because uh, they don't know if, if their efforts is actually helping or not. Um, of course, right now with the coronavirus, one of the main issues is the testing. Um, and if people knew how the testing is going, if, pe if more and more people actually got the test, um, and then they actually saw the trends of how their efforts in uh, practicing social distancing is uh, actually helping plan the curve or, uh, or uh, reduce like the death rates and all those other things, uh, I guess people would probably find social distancing as more uh, beneficial. Um, but overall, like social distancing, I mean, it's just, uh, um, it, it's, it's, it's different in, in many countries. You have to look at what are the risks on either implementing social distancing or just implementing herd immunity. Um, every country is different. Every country can, uh, can, can tolerate one more than the other one. Um, for me, as an, as an opinion for me, like let's say, you know, like Kenya was was uh, being discussed earlier, they have a, a greater population that are young, and um, if they practice herd immunity, they they wouldn't have that much of an issue. Uh, but like let's say in Italy, like Italy, they have a large population which is uh, which is elderly, like above the age of, of uh, the working class of younger adults, and um, of course the disease would spread quicker for them. And uh, it would be more uh, devastating if they practice the whole herd immunity technique to fight against the virus. And, but yeah, but overall, I guess just knowing who has the virus would be more helpful. And um, also, it's not, it's not enough to just say practice social distancing. You still have to practice your personal hygiene. Uh, you have to use the, you know, the PPE, personal protective equipment, et cetera, masks. And um, because, it, I mean, in the end, the disease is not going away. Uh, you know, Dr. Green just emphasized that the disease, the disease is going to stay with us. And, and are we just going to live in quarantine or are we just going to live in this social distancing uh, type of, uh, I call it type of uh, like fear pressure technique, like all of all the rest of our lives? Because, I mean, there's, there's many risks. Uh, and, uh, we just have to know uh, what risks we must face, or, or what risks, uh, you know, we have to we have to be able to balance. So we can, um, um, other words, in other words, uh, just keep going. Okay, good. Thank you. And there's time for one minute for one question or comment. Anybody want to say anything? Okay, good. 